evening from Yami Bean TV. Wishing you all well, sending loads of love to you as usual. Um, just some breaking news coming in, and you're pleased to report that Big Tony Argent and he, he's my beloved sister Lisa will be making an appearance soon on Yami B TV because over the last few weeks, many of you have been asking how he is, and we can't see him and you know how he's doing. But please report he's doing really, really well. They both are. And has been spending time with the grandchildren, daughters, family, that kind of stuff. But they'll be here very, very, very soon uh, to talk certain things. Also on my WhatsApp tonight, loads of debates and on certain subjects, one of them being the subject of pain. Now, there's an old adage that said, what doesn't break us makes us stronger. Now, is that an old adage fact? I'm going to sit on, I'm going to sit on the fence. Uh, till I hear everybody's views or opinions or if you comment at all but something that I was thinking about quite deeply because one man's pain is not another man's pain what somebody else cries about you know some of us might not cry about you know we can be sympathetic and empathetic and comfort them and you know but none of us are in any position to be judgmental and say just because they're crying over that that makes them weaker because we don't find what they're in pain over that painful. I'm guilty, as many of us, some of us are probably, of almost um, laughing in the old days where somebody's crying over something and you think, well, how can you be crying over that? It's not that painful. No, no, no. It's not our, it's not our person, personnel to judge anybody who's suffering or feels pain at whatever time they feel it. Now, I see now that pain, can we get over it with our thoughts and feelings or control how we, we deal with things that pained us in the past? I'm using examples, say, of going back and forth to institutions. I get used to how it runs, what to expect when I get there, the kind of behaviours I expect to see, the kind of feelings I expect to see, all familiar things and painful experiences that I've done countless counts of times and fair to say that I got used to it and could accept it and get on with it probably a bit easier though many men have gone on half that journey and not been the same men at all uh, so that can contradict itself a little bit as well but if you talk about a man who's coming on the sweat box from crown court or, or court of, of any kind and He's asking, what is it like? He's never been there before. It's quite fearful, quite daunting when you haven't experienced it before. You know, many of many things that happen in prison left many of us traumatized and still in pain up to today. So for a new person going to experience it is gonna be finding it much more painful than someone like me that knows what to expect if you get what I mean now. If someone say, um, and then who are us? I was also going to say that nobody's, anybody's pain, everybody's pain is different, whether they're crying because their football team lost and they're in severe mid-morning over it of a cup final. And we find it like a bit funny that they could be in such pain over a football game when there'd be many, many more to come. That's the realistic view. There'd be many more times when it, the foot will be on the other, the shoe will be on the other foot and it will be our turn to smile and be joyful because you can't know sadness or happiness without not one knowing the other, if you get what I mean. So if a man, right, as I've witnessed over the years, a man's mum dies while I'm in prison or someone really close, close to them, that real, real loved ones, and I see them crying, the chaplain's delivered the dreaded news, and you go there and you say, I'm really sorry, and my heart goes out to you. You're not used to seeing this person cry, and he's in real, real pain. And so does that mean that because I never experienced it at that time. When it comes to me, when it finally came to me, would I be able to understand the pain or accept it better than because I'd seen it experienced by somebody else? That pain that he was going through at that time, obviously very, very painful, very painful for me when my, my beloved mother died. But to me, the answer is no, because he would have had special memories for his mother or loved one that we wouldn't know about. So his pain is gonna be worse. We won't know the depth of the pain that he's feeling at that time until it's happened to you. Does it put us in a stronger position 
because we saw how he's how he, what he went through so we know what to expect a little bit by bereavement well no i don't agree either because when it happened to me i'd seen it so much times around me but the pain was awful you know almost a dying screech on the floor and you know in fact i took it badder than the person one of the persons that i saw that day so just because you witness somebody going through that pain, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will be able to handle it when it comes your way. Like you're gonna, if I, well, I've been to prison, we go back and forth to prison uh, regular, so we know what to expect, the treatment, the behaviors, the thoughts, the feelings, the pressure, all the things that are gonna have to come up, having gone there back and forth so many times, going into that sweat box, going into reception, we know what to expect. So painful as they are, familiar pain as well, you know, self-destructive, uh, brought on by ourselves, of course, um, getting used to that pain and, you know, dealing with it time and time again, left many, many men demoralized in the end when you keep doing the same run. But if you're on a sweat box and a man hasn't been to prison before, it's very daunting for him. And he's going to have, you're thinking in your head, well, this is what you've got to expect. When you go for a reception, that's gonna happen. This is gonna happen. They're gonna try this. They're gonna ask you to bend over. They're gonna search, you know, wherever. And the person's gonna be feeling feeling very daunting, very daunting uh, fear factor before he's even got to the gate. So then he does it for the first time and his first time is gonna be very, very painful for him because he's not used to being without his loved ones. You know, not being able to have control over his own life, no saying any matters anymore and will cry probably in, in, when it, late at night when others can't see or be in real severe pain uh, that he will try to disguise because it's going to be seen as weakness of some kind and you can be, get, get exploited. So knowing what I'm saying to him and giving him all that information about what to expect is not still, it helps him because it gives him insight into going, but until he experiences it himself, He's not really gonna, he's not gonna really know what the pain is. Because many times over the years, chaplains go to see men regularly on a day-to-day -day basis and tell people that their loved ones have died and they're crying and you know, they're friends close to us and people close to us and we go to comfort them out of empathy and sympathy and you know, knowing for you know, not not never seeing a man in that way before, you know, to be breaking down and in front of our very eyes and so I'm thinking, ooh, ooh, what about when it, if it ever happens to me, maybe I know what to expect now and what to feel like. But I wasn't, it didn't. When my mum passed, sadly, uh, last year, I mean the year before last, having gone through and witnessed people going through um, that trauma and pain, it didn't help me because the pain that I felt was severe. I was screeching, crying like an animal, a wounded animal. So I couldn't. You can't, until you've been through it yourself, know exactly what the pain is really like. You can have all the intelligence, you can read as many books as you want, but until you experience it yourself, you can't come to know final. You can't, you can't be ready for it when it comes uh, because everybody reacts differently uh, to bad news, sad news, or you know what I mean anyway. So my answer to that is, until it happens. So when it did, when it, sorry, when going away from that as well, what was I gonna say again? Shit, I was gonna say, oh, about the trauma as well, because they were saying earlier on that you can, you can, by your thoughts and feelings, you can have the control now, having been through it so many times or seen others go through it, that you can handle it in some way. You've got some element of like, okay, it's feeling like that, it's really painful, but I'll be able to deal with it. Mm -mm, I don't believe so either because after what I told you all about Christmas when I suffered that traumatic experience and in front of a few people now it's very difficult for me to go and see these people at the moment uh, very many very much because every time they see me they break down and cry they say they go to sleep and cry their eyes out every night and you know by what they witness and and what I what they witness before their very eyes the pain and of the stuff that I talked about with you all. So I'm saying, will they be able to get over that trauma? And the person that I'm talking to tonight or the people I'm talking to tonight say that, you know, with time it, it wears off, it wears off. But not so quickly, 
it doesn't it doesn't seem to me so the pain that that they went through that night has it said they say it's never going to leave them for the rest of their lives uh, that's what they're saying as serious as, as, as so all the counseling in the world what do we do what doesn't make us what doesn't break us uh, makes us stronger no doesn't because just because you went through you witnessed that that doesn't mean the next pain that comes along uh, or the same kind of thing that happens after that if it witnessed you witnessed it again in someone else would you be able to deal with it again i'm not sitting on the fence i'm believing that the old adage of what doesn't break us because i was thinking the other day of the spinal injury like the resilience and of the power of the mind and the strength given by god to get out of it uh, the strength, you know, that I had to find to get up to walk and use my hands again, thinking of now going through that trauma. And then if another trauma comes up now, I don't think that I can find. You just, this, it just wears you down in the end, that fighting spirit. When, and because, you know, the, the wounds and the injuries, we, we talk about my friend James McGregor and other men out there that have got, got injuries and have to suffer, go through uh, that same pain every single day. And they don't, can they deal with it? Just because they bared it the day before, the next day they're dreading going through it again. And they still can't cope if you get what I mean. So that's what I, that's what I, that was my version. This is my opinion on pain, that every man's pain is as different to another man's. And we must never, never, never belittle uh, any pain. But to get over things, I believe you can, like get familiar with it. You can deal with it, but there are always new pains and anything you ever been through before, like the, the people that were around me that night and we dealt with other traumas before and know how to handle them. But when those new pains come, what good is having been through the spine or having been through this other trauma? When these new pains come, then I don't know how to deal with it because I haven't been through it yet. So that's my answer to pain tonight is there anything else i might be up with a story but coming up in in, in a minute um the a vision for you uh from a book somebody's asked me and this re this relates to real 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 pain 